Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com and today I'm going to show you how to build a tropical house track like this. But before we start, I want to remind you that there's a link below to the free content navigation guide, which is an easy to navigate web page with links to all the content on this channel. And besides that, in the near future, I'm going to begin adding tips and other bits of information that will only be available there. You know, things like simple steps that will get you started and up and running quick. Things that are in the videos, but are written down in simple steps that serve as quick reminders when you need information down the road. If you're working with programs like WaveLab or Cubase Plug, or the Cable Guys Shaper Box 2 and many many other projects that are in the works then I know you're going to find just like I have that this is an invaluable study aid. And the other thing I want to make sure you understand is that this is not a simple PDF. This is a constantly updated page that has any information that uh, is new or anytime videos are changed, really anything updated. And once you have it, you will always have the latest information constantly updated. So if you haven't gotten it already, go to the link below, click on it, and save it to your favorites. It's my gift to you, and it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's get started. So... Uh, I'm motivated to share this today because I was recently searching um, for other people's tutorials on, uh, you know, producing a tropical house track, and I was basically blown away at how hard people work in their other DAWs. Now, I don't want to put down anybody else's DAW because, you know, again, uh, there's, I don't even want to get into that, but I got to say... There's some things that Cubase does that I just don't see in anybody else's, you know, setup, and um, which is brilliant, by, you know, from Steinberg, the way they've designed Cubase, because there's certain things that you can do in Cubase that just leaps and bounds over what I see other people trying to do when they're creating tracks. Um, so I just was moved to share that with you and show you how to do things in Cubase. You know, it seems like whenever you search out production videos, I find... You know, all kinds of, you know, the Fruity Loop Studio and Ambleton and Logic and everybody seems to have tutorials out there showing you how to produce music and Cubase <laughs> does never seem to show up. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, as a producer myself that, you know, writes and produces music and I only do things in Cubase and I love Cubase, I'm just stunned when I watch other people do what they do. Um, because I just go, wow, you know, you're working so hard when Cubase can do this so much easier. So anyway, let me show you. So we're going to take some time and get into this. Here we go. All right. So first things first, let's going to set our tempo. We'll make this kind of a moderate um, tropical house type thing. We'll set it the tempo around 106. And we're going to start with just creating a four bar loop to get going. And uh, here's the first thing out of the gate that you know, Cubase has that I just don't see anybody else having. It's this chord track thing. So I'm going to bring this up. And again, once I bring up a chord track, I can just play one note. And I can play these chords with one note. So I just fool around and start um, finding some chords I like. I might have to play a couple times till I find the thing I like, but once I get something going, let me hit the record button here. And then court, Cubase just uh, records those chords right in. Nothing to it. Easy peasy. Let me get rid of the chord track. And then I can take um, that, you know, that, uh, what I just played and turn that into chords. And I go up to, uh, I think it's, yeah, project, yeah, project, <clears throat> excuse me, chord track, create chord symbols. And boom, I now have the chord symbols up here as well. And these now, basically, I can use these to build the whole track very quickly and easily. Mm -hmm. 
So once I get, um, you know, the basic uh, pa- the piano part in or some kind of rhythm going with the chord track, and I make a chord track out of it, I, I'm going to expand it out to 16 bars, which I've done here. And um, and then I usually just take those chords. I get rid of the little basic piano part because I'm not going to use that anymore. And I'll usually take my chords and drag it onto a pad uh, just to give myself some kind of working sound to go with like this. Let's see here. And then I can play that. And then it's easier to um, build other things I'm going to show you here. So now I'm going to start using more of the kind of sounds I'm actually going to use in this song. And I'm using uh, Nexus as my keyboard for this, so just be aware. Um, If you don't know what Nexus is, let me show you real quick. It's this uh, synth Nexus. And... um, Every, every sound I'm going to use will be pulled out of that. So uh, once I have this um, chord pad going here, then it's easy. I can play any any track I want, and I can set it up to follow the chord track, which I have it set to chords and to follow. And I can basically just play my keyboard basically like a drum pad. And uh, with any rhythm, and any key, I mean, I could use my fist, <laughs> which I am. I'm not even playing any particular keys, just the rhythm. And then I can play along, and Cubase automatically will fill in to the right chords. And same thing, I'll copy it and expand it out to maybe 16 bars here. I might have to sometimes, you know, make some edits on the timing if I get it off. But once I get it, there it is. And next up, we'll get some drums going, a kick. Maybe a clap. like that. Maybe get a little tambourine going. And um, maybe throw in a bass part. And again, because the bass, all my soft since at this point are following the chord track, I just play a note. And it follows the chords. I just have to worry about the rhythm. And again, this is what <laughs> kills me on watching somebody else do this because the other, and again, nothing against you if this is how you do your, your work, but you know, someone was like entering in these notes one by one, you know, with their mouse. And I guess that's okay, you know, but man, you have to think about all the variation you're trying to do here and, you know, what's it, how's it going to, I mean, uh, it's just so much work. When you've got a, a chord track, I can play one key, one note on my keyboard. I don't even have to, you know, and again, I said this many times, I play the keyboard, so I don't need to do this, but it's just so much easier. Why not? You know, and there you go. It's ready to go. I guess I don't need the click track anymore to kill that out. Okay. You know, and I can concentrate on the feel of it. You know, if I want to play a couple extra notes, you know, or quick syncopations or whatever, you know, I can get into the feel of it. I don't have to like, you know, think too much. I can just go for the go for the feel, and that's that's what the music is, right? And uh, let's fill it in a little bit with some kind of pad.
And then typically I'll throw some kind of um, top line on here. In this case, I'll do some kind of like marimba bell part. And again, it's following the chord track. I just got to pluck the notes. big on not repeating everything a million times. I like variety, so I'll usually, um, if I am going to repeat a part like this, I will put it on a different uh, sound. I'll repeat the part, but I'll throw it on some kind of different sound. Then I'll go out and start grabbing some transitions, you know, some symbols, some reverse symbols, some risers. I'll drag them in and pluck them into the various important parts of the song that I like. And then, um, what would a Tropical House song be without some kind of vocal chops in it? And um, the way I create vocal chops, actually, I, I need to be, probably make a video on that because it's it's a little bit more elaborate. I'll take a sample, I'll play, um, I'll put it into very audio, I'll change the format around to get some of the weird sounds out of it, and. Um, and then really process the heck out of it. So that's that's pretty elaborate, and it would take some time for me to show you all those steps. But, you know, vocal chops anyway. And uh, here's where, I, you know, some of the magic and the sound comes from. Let me bring up the mixer here for a minute. Um, I route everything through a, a subgroup, and in that subgroup, let's see here. There's a couple things I do. Well, first of all, let me show you this. Um... I use shaper box a lot, and uh, this is what I'm going to use to get my side chain type of thing going here. Watch this. You'll hear the difference of this that makes in the sound. All right? Big pumping sound. If you don't use shaper box, um, you know, there's other tools that do it, but this thing really, to me, is the, is, is the key to it so much. There's that sound. And then on top of that, what uh, never hurts to add a little bit of OTT on there. That's like the secret sauce to a lot of things. And that's pretty much it. Um, let's see what we got here. You know, there you go. I mean, you know, there's still quite a bit to do if you want to do a full out production because I wouldn't just loop this around forever. I'd, you know, make various other sections and uh, change the instrumentation and things like that. And maybe I'll share those things in a future video, but that should get you started at the basic concept of it. And again, I just love the way I can do these things in Cubase. This is my preference for sure. So anyway, if you haven't grabbed your navigation guide, you should have grabbed that from the link you know, below, there's links to all the content on this channel, and there's tons of tutorials, and saves you from having to look through all the playlists to try to 
figure out whatever you want to learn. It covers a lot of different subjects and ever growing. And it's absolutely free. Just, you know, click on the link below and download to save it to your favorites. And um, that's it. Glad you guys are here and we'll see you on the next one.